I've been a Conservative voter since 1979. I've now switched to reform. What are you going to put in your manifesto to win me back? Can I ask one question? Sorry to be rude, Prime Minister. Why, in a sentence, why have you swapped to reform, uh, Jerry? Two issues. <coughs> uh, net zero and immigration. Uh, particularly immigration, um, you've been basically saying that we're going to have 250,000 limit back in the 2019 manifesto. You feign surprise when it hit 745,000 um, when you must have known how many visas you were issuing. OK, let's get to the Prime Minister. Well, that's a Boris Johnson policy. Really important to understand that it's Boris Johnson who was Prime Minister when they changed the visa rules, which allowed in more students, because of course it's good for the economy, we should be doing that. There's no problem with doing that as long as we use the extra money that we get from all the foreign capital flowing in to pay for our world-class education. We use that money that we tax to be able to increase infrastructure investment, to build enough houses to be able to deal with the influx of new people. That's fine. But to get mad at Rishi Sunak over a Boris Johnson policy, very interesting to me, because a lot of what's weird is a lot of the Reform UK types seem to really like Boris Johnson. They seem to be like the back Boris brigade, who hate the fact that Sunak and Truss overtook Johnson, even though Johnson is the one who caused all of the problems that they dislike, which I find very funny. But of course, if your single policy that you care about is reducing immigration, you know, don't care about the economy you don't care about any of that you don't care about all the after effects of what happens if we have like population decline if we essentially kneecap the entire education sector because we want fewer brown people in the country you can vote for that if you want and you should vote for reform uk they're the only one promising that and conservative party have broken their promise on this there is a democratic deficit i understand why because they understand all of the economic benefits of the policy but that's not what the voters voted for they didn't vote for that at all I mean, it'd be nice if for once they actually were honest with the public that they can't have the reduction in immigration and the pensions that they want at the same time. Like these two things are diametrically, materially opposed. I guess what they probably will want to do instead is just tax young people to pay for all of the extra pension provision they're going to have to be able to dole out when the gigantic boomer cohort retire. Now, a uh, potential lost Conservative voter, Prime Minister. Well, Jerry, look, first of all, thanks for your support for the party over so many years. That's fantastic. And look, I'm sorry to hear about it, but all I'd say is next election, there's going to be one of two people Prime Minister at the end of it, me or Keir Starmer, on the two issues that you mentioned, you should just come to a view on who you think is more likely to deliver for you. And on the issue of net zero, I don't know if you remember, last year I stood up and made a very significant speech, changed our approach to net zero, it was very clear that we can't rush to it in an ideological way. The thing is, he doesn't even care about whether or not you rush to it. Saying ideological doesn't make any sense because everything's ideological. But these Reform UK voters just want to see the entirety of the policy go. They want expansion of oil licences, as you have done, I guess, so far. But they also want to not have any changes to the way in which we do things like public transport or on emissions control zones or whether we do things on terms of moving towards electric cars. They don't want any of this. They want you to abandon all of those policies and let the entirety of the private sector go ham in terms of investment in fossil fuels. They don't want you to go slower. They want you to reverse course. Of course, it's stupid. It's a stupid policy that very few people in this country actually care about to get away from net zero. It's very funny that Nigel Farage and Richard Tice want a referendum on net zero when huge swathes of the population agree on this. One, again, one of the greenest countries in Europe. So they're really shooting themselves in the foot. But if a very tiny minority of people want to split the right wing vote over this, be my guest. But at the end of the day, it's very funny that Rishi Sunak's basically only response to this is you have to vote for us to stop Keir Starmer, which again is something that I keep hearing from the from Labour Party voters when we try and vote for another party like the Greens. Just two main parties who have a vested interest in first past the post and are maintaining the two party system, trying to blackmail you into voting for a party that doesn't support any of the things that you support. Way that saddles costs of five, ten, fifteen grand on ordinary families like yours. Didn't think that was right. Changed the policy on it. Of course, we're going to get there. I've got young kids. I care about the environment. But we should do that in a sensible way, especially when we're doing a better job on it than pretty much anyone else. I got an enormous amount of flack uh, from people for that, but I think it's the right thing for the country. So I think you and I are aligned on that. And when it comes to immigration, well, I agree with you. Look, the numbers are too high. I've been Prime Minister 18 months. I inherited a set of numbers which were, as you said, extremely high. But I've taken more action on this issue than anyone else. The, the measures we've taken to raise the salary threshold, clamp down on abuse of the student route and the social care route will mean that inflation is roughly halved, net migration. The med this is the abuse of the student route and the social care route. It's not abusing to just 
adhere to the policies that your predecessor Boris Johnson set out. This is the Boris Johnson policies. They didn't abuse anything. They just followed the policies that were set out in your previous manifesto. It doesn't make any sense. And again, the, the routes towards increased economic prosperity by getting more bright people to study who bring in foreign capital and buying our export products and other people who are coming here to work into a massively understaffed sector of society that is only going to expand as more people retire people like social care workers we need these people Measures all kicked in at the start migration of this, this year. Halved, Net said, migration. Yeah, I think you said inflation, migration. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, just, <laughs> Net yeah. mi- inflation's that already been achieved. Inflation's you already been hard. Yeah, okay. um, so Net Migration, <laughs> yeah, so down to down by three hundred thousand, give or take, the measures that we've but, introduced, which all kicked in at the beginning of this year, can I agree with you? And when it comes to tackling illegal migration, you know, I'm battling the Labour Party and everyone else to get our Rwanda bill through Parliament. So look, I'm the Rwanda bill that you'd have never supported and wanted to get rid of, and your current Home Secretary called batshit. Okay, mate, I believe you. And also, how are you going to get the flights away when Rwanda, the state-owned Rwandan airline, don't want to do it because it would harm their brand image? It's never going to happen, mate. That £1,000 bet, it's not looking good, is it? Look, those are what? the issues that you care about. I care about them too. I've already shown that I'm delivering on them. And as I said, if you vote for reform, all you're going to do is put Keir Starmer in power and then we're going to get no action on those things that you care You're a Labour enabler. You can't vote for a party that actually supports policies that you want because otherwise you're enabling the Labour Party. See, we could do it. We can do it too. Care about Migration is not going to come down. The boats will not be stopped and he will adopt an ideological approach to net zero, reverse the changes I've made. And that's right. going to cost you and everyone else. And you don't need to even believe me. Just look at what Sadiq Khan's okay. trying to do in London with you. That should give you all the evidence that you need. But if you're a Reform UK voter and you also bind this idea that some things can be politically ideological and some not when everything in politics is entirely informed by ideology, the ideological part they disagree with on net zero is going towards net zero at all. It's not how fast or slow that you do it. Having promised that you would stop the boats, you'll be aware that in the first quarter of this year, Prime Minister, we actually have a record figure of 5,435. This, along with your attempt to get waiting lists down, is another failure. Well, hang on. Last year, the first year that I was in power, for the first time ever across the entire year, we reduced the number of boats coming by over a third, yes. right? Yeah, and but, they, they, of course. But now they... we're on target for a, possibly a record year, 5435 for the first quarter, which is higher than the previous record of 4,548. Yeah. And this is all coming from 12 months where we managed to get the numbers down by a third, right? So it shows... After you promised to stop them completely, it's not only you're failing your promise, it's now going back up to get record highs again. So you can't even make the good on any of your promises. You. Mr Prime Minister, your pledge this morning about protecting shop workers, fantastic move, but when are we actually going to get really realistic about dealing with the problems and what they are? My local corner shop has now has to employ private security. It is getting attacked on a weekly basis. Now, surely we should be investing in the police, the police to deal with these problems at source, not by putting these other elements in place for um, that, those situations. This is something that the Prime Minister, I think, has moved on today, and you're going to hear more. John, stay on the line, Prime Minister. Uh, have you considered, have you considered, Paula, that there is no magic money tree? There's no just magic money tree that we can shake and provide you with all the new police provision. Uh, John, thanks uh, Thanks for the call. And you, look, you talked about you know, your local corner shop. I grew up working in my mum's shop. She was a pharmacist in Southampton. That's where I spent my time working. And, you know, I remember what it's like when things like this happen. It's do awful. People shop, uh, see, I hate the word shop, but do people see from your mum's yeah, shop? Yeah, look, it's happened. It happened when we were there, right? And it's, a, it's an Did awful thing. Did you chase them thing. down the street? No, not quite. <laughs> Did your father or your mother? No, uh, no, no neither neither those uh, things too. But it's a but very... It I mean, this again is an entirely a function of the failure on cost of living. A decade of supply-side labour market reform driving down wages and living standards deliberately to enrich their mates in the city and inflate house prices of their middle-class voter base. And suddenly people, after their failure or every other part of economic policy, cannot afford to live because of a cost of living crisis that they failed on because of their way they've invested in the energy departments, in the energy markets, in this country. As meant that people can't afford to live and therefore are reduced to stealing things. Wow, I can't believe this could have happened. Till, it, isn't it? It, of course, and as a small family business, it's obviously it's financially affecting, but it's also very distressing. So look, I know, I know what it feels like. And actually, we've got a really... 
good track record on reducing crime since 2010, since the start of this parliament, overall crime is down uh, considerably. But the one area we've seen an increase, particularly over the last year, and you talked about it, people will see it on social media, is on retail crime, you know, shoplifting. And it's not acceptable. It's absolutely not right, which is why today, John, we've outlined a series of of new steps we're going to take. There's going to be a new offence for assaulting a shop worker, because that's just simply not right. One of my uh, colleagues in Parliament, Matt Vickers, campaigned long and hard on this. I'm delighted we could do that. We're going to make better use of facial recognition technology, and we're also going to make sure that we tag prolific offenders so we can monitor what they're up to and ban them from certain places. He doesn't just sound like Blair. Like, he acts like Blair as well. It's just like, you know how would, what would solve this? ID cards. Let's get facial scans of everybody so we have, like, a database of everybody's faces that I'm sure the state won't do anything untoward with. And we've been working with the retailers on this for a while. I think it will make a significant difference. But you're right about just extra resources. That's why we've delivered on our manifesto pledge to put 20,000 more police officers on the street, fundamentally, what? and give them the power. Where's the money going to come from, Rishi? There's no magic money tree. Who are you going to tax to pay for your splurge on police officers? Where are you going to pay for the money from? What tax increases are you going to do? Weird, again, how this specific policy never gets scrutinised in terms of where the funding model is going to come from, or even where the people are going to come from to train to become police officers, given what the police force is like at the moment. Yet as soon as somebody says, I want to feed hungry children, it's like, whoa, whoa magic money tree. Where are you going to get the money from? Whose taxes are you going to pay to feed those children? Increase in defence budget? Crickets. Increase number of police officers? Crickets. I support both of those things. I support an increase in defence budget. I support more investment in terms of policing, both in terms of extra training so that we can deal with the problems in our police forces and increasing the capacity because they've all been cut to the bone because of the Os Osborne austerity government. And you should pay for that by taxing the rich. But they never ever go down the line of talking about where the money is going to come from. Only when it's like draconian policy does that get avoided? Powers they need to keep us safe. And this but, retail crime plan is just the latest in the different plans that we've been rolling out that have been working. Overall crime is down, as I said, by about 50% since 2010 okay. and down by about a fifth if since we, the start of this parliament. If we stay with shop theft, you write that anyone who assaults a retail worker will face, well, not only will face up to six months in jail, but my understanding is that the sentencing bill, which is waiting to go through, is going to scrap all sentences under 12 months. So how will that work? No, it's a, there are there are definitely situations where it would be better, and in fact will cut crime, to treat people with, for example, tags in the community. But that will be a choice at the time where whatever is better for the situation that we're dealing in. We, so we, we still have, will have six month jail terms after the sentence. Yeah, I mean like this, this new offence. This new offence. <laughs> right. This okay, you're going to have extra long jail times, which means we'll increase the prison population. Where are you going to put them? Our prisons are literally full so that cases are being delayed from going to judgment because they can't afford to put people in the prisons because there's not enough prison space because of your government's failure to engage in capital investment and expansion in prison capacity. And here you are saying we're going to put more people in prison and have longer jail sentences, massively increasing the prison population. And there's no prisons to fucking put them in because of your austerity policies, you idiot. But again, I would they would say, well, we'll, we'll build more prisons. And they'll obviously never get asked where the money is going to come from. This new offence specifically allows for that because we have seen an increase in assaults on shop workers. I don't think that's right. And as I said, there's been a, a campaign led by one of my colleagues, Matt Vickers, to have a yes. specific offence to demonstrate a, the seriousness with which we take this issue, uh, but also to make sure that we send a strong signal. Yes, and you know our jails are full, Prime Minister. Oh, well, actually, we're, we're embarking right now on the largest expansion of prison places that we've seen in, in, in literally, if not if not century, decades and decades. And I, as a programme that I authorised as Chancellor, multi-billion pounds, building thousands and thousands. Where are you going to find the money? Where's this magic money tree that you've magically managed to shake? to provide all these extra prison places, Rishi. Now, I'm on the left. I know that the magic money tree exists. It's called the Bank of England. But if, just like Rachel Reeves, they are sticking to those same fiscal rules about debt falling as a percentage of GDP and only borrowing for investment rather than day-to-day -day spending, where are you going to have the money from? Is it going to come from borrowing for investment in infrastructure, capital investment in the prison system? Are you going to increase taxes? Are you going to reduce budgets in other departments? They never ask it. They never ask it at all. Is this the same as the 40 new hospitals? Because that, that hole in the ground that's meant to be a new hospital in Leeds is very much a girt fucking hole. Well, that's it. Again, they keep saying, we're going to build 40 new hospitals, all of these new prisons. And they don't materialise, do they? 
Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron and there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.